we've actually been in a Bitcoin demand bear market. And will this spark the next Bitcoin price surge? I, I thought this was super fascinating here. Yeah. Um, it said that, uh, let's see, where does it say uh, Q1 here? Let me uh, search, search for that. And I'm trying to go through and highlight here. BTC has been in a bear market in terms of demand since Q1 2021, back when ARK peaked, the ARK institutional fund from Kathy Woods. She argued alongside data from on chain analytics, Glassnode. However, the supply side has been unusually tight for this cycle holding up price to a surprising degree, even touching slight new highs at one point since then, dry kindling, no spark. So it's almost like we're seeing so much right now that is running counter to what the Bitcoin price is doing. And we're going to look at, at more of that. But here's the thing. If, if several of these things were to, if, if several of these things were to some of these on-chain fundamental things we're going to be looking at, if they weren't coming together and you had the price action going down and you had a lot of on-chain metrics really bearish, then yeah, we would definitely be in a bear market. I would agree, say we're in a bear market 100%, buckle up, is going to get really bad. But I don't know if that's what we're seeing. Yeah. Another thread here on Reddit says it's not even close to a bear market yet. Now you move on to the next. You shouldn't lose hope in the market. I thought this was really interesting. Comparing the May correction to the current one, okay? Over May to July, we got minus 55%. We've only been down 42% over the last two months. So why, when we're clearly still in a longer term uptrend, okay? Until we break new lows, uh, which, you know, you could argue, you could argue we're still in an uptrend as long as we don't go below where we went in May. You can make that argument. We're still in a bull run. If we went below where we were in May, it, you know, it, it's hard because now we got lower lows and lower highs. We got one higher high, but then we'd have a lower low, and then that would not be great. That would certainly mean, you know, we, we are in a bear market. But, you know, the reason why so many people think that we are is because of the traditional Bitcoin cycles. And look, I always said, I always said, I was going to go with history until it broke. It finally broke. Yeah. Stock to flow, it broke. It's broke. The Bitcoin cycles, they're broke. Some people, there are many different theories, which we're going to get into later in on the channel about some different things. Is it an extended cycle? Is it a, uh, you know, is it a version of the 2013, 2014 that we haven't seen before? Or are we just in micro cycles? Are we in micro cycles and we've been looking at it wrong the whole time? Quite, quite possibly. So um, we'll be looking at that, but there's a lot of, Bearish stuff out there pointing that we maybe are still, or uh, bullish, excuse me, that we are still in a bull market. Here's one of them. A lot of stable coins are waiting on the sidelines to enter the market equals massive price shock. The long and the short of it here is, you have to think of it like this. You've got the lowest amount of Bitcoin on exchanges that we've seen since, I, th I think it was 2018 or 17. It's a long time. And we've got more stable coins than ever sitting on the sideline. What does that mean? That means that at some point, this is what he was talking about earlier when he said, it feels like it's been dry kindling with no spark. The kindling is there for Bitcoin. Right. Everything is lined up perfect when it comes to the on-chain stuff. And that stuff matters. That stuff matters. So the fact that people have stable coins sitting on the sidelines at record volumes that's a clue. That should tell you something. We have this one here, 3D price uh, downfall in SS, our bottom correlation in a year. That's another thing that's really bullish. But here's what I want to show you. This is from Plan C. Never heard of Plan C. Can someone ask the Bitcoin devs if we can peg the Bitcoin price to the hash rate? Now, traditionally, when we see huge spikes in the hash rate, it's because we're seeing bullish price action, right? And you can see on the chart, when Bitcoin topped out, the hash rate was at its highest back here, back in over the summer or, or in May. But then it fell off like a cliff. Why? Chinese mining ban, right? Chinese mining ban, which we got to see what happens with the United States and Russia over here. Maybe we'll see another fall. But notice, as the hash rate has increased, we've not seen any price increase. We pretty much have not seen any price increase since it has been peaking. When it set a new all-time high, 
the price was not even close to a new all-time high. We were down about 15% at that point, okay? So there's a great chance with this hash rate that we are seeing, uh, you know, everything in line and everything in order for that kindling to get that spark. And I, I'm really starting to believe that what's happening right now is they're really trying to lull you to sleep. They're trying to lull you to sleep in this market. Now, I, and I can't explain from a macro sense how it would make sense if Bitcoin goes up. There's a theory going out there right now that we're actually seeing Bitcoin finally becoming that hedge. And we'll see the stock market collapse and the economy collapse and Bitcoin go up. Now, I, Mike McGlone says that. You can check out what he says about it. But, you know, very interesting stuff. You know, but the important thing is, you know, remember that you're early here. 